latest on Worcester News tonight. Back in court and back on the field. The latest twist in the Kevin Mensa case. Plus, a city man faces a judge after he allegedly tried to strangle and drown his three-year-old nephew. We have reaction from the boy's father. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Andy Madison. We begin tonight with Kevin Mensa. And if this sounds familiar, it should. The high school football player has been cleared to play tonight for Shepherd Hill, but his eligibility for the rest of the season is still up in the air. Shepherd Hill's Kevin Mensa and his attorneys were back in Worcester Superior Court today. A judge granted a second injunction allowing him to play in tonight's game. The ruling comes one day after an MIAA committee upheld the organization's initial ruling saying Mensa was ineligible because of inaccuracies in a transfer form. And Mensa's lawyers were seeking an injunction to allow him to play for the rest of the season, which a judge will rule on next week. Outside the courtroom, Mensa and his mother are hoping to get a judgment soon on his eligibility status. If you're having a hard time, like something like this, you know, just never, just never give up and always have faith, you know, and just hope for the best and you will get what you need. My hope is the whole thing have to be done because it's very hard for us as the family. Um, Mensa a transfer to Shepherd Hill from Holy Name over the summer. He sat out the first two games for Shepherd Hill while waiting for a court ruling. He will be in court next Wednesday to see if a judge will issue a ruling on his status for the rest of the season. Also in a Worcester court today, a man accused of killing his cousin execution style is found guilty of first degree murder. Prosecutors say Peter Jasper shot and killed his cousin Paul Meluzzo outside of Smitty's Tavern in December 2014. Meluzzo was found dead from several gunshot wounds in the parking lot next to Smitty's on West Boylston Street. Prosecutors say Jasper got angry with Meluzzo and the two of them were involved in a failed business venture. Jasper faces life in prison without parole. He will be sentenced on Monday. An update to a story we brought you yesterday about a Worcester man accused of brutally assaulting his three-year-old nephew. Today, the boy's father talked about his son and the alleged actions of his brother who appeared in court earlier today. Our Rosalind Flaherty reports. Taj McDonald, the man who police say called 911 and said he killed his three-year-old nephew, appears in court Friday. He's, uh, he's in an emotional state right now. He's um, somewhat uh, uh, frightened, not sure of what's happening. According to court documents, McDonald strangled the young boy, tried to drown him in the bathtub, and pushed him down the stairs, causing facial injuries. After a mental health evaluation, a doctor suggested McDonald be seen at Bridgewater State Hospital. Failure to hospitalize will present a danger to either himself or others as a result of an underlying mental illness. Certainly the facts uh, uh, as you, um, uh, you know them uh, and I know them uh, raise some concern. The boy's father, Ari McDonald, says his son is in stable condition in the hospital. He'll be all right. He'll probably be out in a couple of days. Ari says Taj is his younger brother and has watched the three-year-old before. He says he has no idea how this could have happened. It just doesn't make any sense at all. You know what I mean? Things just happen so abruptly. Taj McDonald faces a number of charges, including two counts of attempted murder and reckless endangerment of a child. Police say he was in charge of watching the boy Thursday while Ari was working. Outside of court today, Ari says he's thankful his son is going to be okay. Rush straight from work straight to him, so like fast as I possibly could. Rosalind Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. More than a dozen people will never forget their experience at the Big E in West Springfield after getting stuck on a ride last night. The wipeout ride malfunctioned, trapping people for about two hours while firefighters worked to get them out. No one was hurt in the incident. The wipeout is a huge disc that spins on the ground until it's up on one side at a 45 degree angle. The ride will be closed for the remainder of the fair. The city of Worcester will open its historic auditorium for a few events next month. Tomorrow night, the auditorium will host a downtown underground event, which will feature plenty of music and entertainment. Other events in October include an organ concert, Wings Over Worcester, and the screening of a silent horror movie, Nosferatu. The city is hoping the events will put the auditorium to good use. You've scheduled five different events during the month of October uh, that are going to allow four of which are in the auditorium, one of which is about the auditorium, uh, which is going to let people further experience the grandeur that is the Worcester Auditorium. 
The auditorium hosted a few walking tours during the summer. After hosting several big events, including a Bob Dylan concert and the Rolling Stones, the space has been mostly empty since the 1980s. Connecticut police, Connecticut police are going through evidence found inside the home of a woman lost at sea. Last night, police in Middletown, Connecticut, removed bags, envelopes, and boxes from Linda, Charman's, Linda Carmen's home. They are still investigating the circumstances surrounding her disappearance. Nathan Carmen, her son, was rescued and later told the Coast Guard their boat didn't sink. He doesn't know what happened to his mother. He has not been named as a suspect in her disappearance. They're credited with saving his life, and today in Worcester, three nurses got to meet him. Our Brittany Schaefer was there for the emotional reunion. I remember floating there and th basically thinking that was it. It was the thought in Wayland Baxter's head after he dove head first into shallow water while vacationing in Saco, Maine. Dove off a riverbank, the water was kind of shallow, hit the bottom of the river and snapped my C2 and C3 vertebrae, instantly paralyzed from the neck down. Whenever he said, I can't move anything, everything just hits you at that point. Three nurses from UMass Memorial Medical Center were vacationing in the same spot. When they saw the Foxborough man in trouble, they rushed to treat him. Friday, Baxter reunited with the nurses he says saved his life. Minuscule movement of my head, which these angels stopped right off the bat, could have caused me permanent paralysis or a Death. These are the kinds of patients that we work with on a daily basis, so we knew initially, like right away, to go to his spine. Baxter's girlfriend, Sherry Burgess, says if the nurses were not nearby, someone else might have unknowingly moved his body, causing more damage. I think about this a lot. Um, I would have grabbed him. I would have made it to him, and I would have grabbed him, and I would have hurt him. After an emotional reunion, the three nurses who treated Baxter say they are surprised with how well he is doing. I'm really happy to see him walking, and he looks looks really good. Not only that you're walking, but how good you're walking, too. It's, it's incredible. Just two months after the accident, Baxter says it was fate the nurses were there. Stars couldn't have been lined up any better for me. I found out they were neuro nurses, which <laughs> put tears in my eyes immediately because to me, you know, there was already a sign that somebody was there for him. Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. Calling all patriots from the classes of the 1970s at Burncoat High School. A mega 70s reunion is happening this Saturday at Union Station in Worcester. And the reunion is for anyone who graduated from Burncoat between the years 1970 and 1979. Organizers say they came up with the idea for the 70s reunion after having a reunion with the class of 1974 and 1975. They want this year's reunion to be bigger than ever. The first time in the city of Worcester that any high school has gotten together to do a decade reunion. And I have heard in the last couple of weeks that um, there are, there's someone from the 1990 classes that were thinking of doing it also. So I think we're kind of, the 70s is a trendsetter here. The night will feature music from Burncoat's jazz band along with raffles raising money for the school. Again, the reunion is this Saturday at Union Station at 6.30 p.m. and will feature a 70s theme. Federal investigators have recovered the event recorder from the train that crashed into a Hoboken rail station Thursday morning. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie says he's been told the investigation could take as long as 10 days to complete. Christie says the only thing they know so far in the investigation is the train it came into the station too fast before crashing through barriers and stopping against the terminal building. One woman was killed and more than 100 other people were hurt.